Hello everyone, welcome to part 26 of this series. In this video we're setting up a boss fight, but before we start I want to announce the winners of this week's random prize draw. The winners are Dakota, Jipnink, Daniel, Maya. Congratulations on winning these prizes. And another thing I would like to point out is that there's currently a humble bundle deal going on. An incredible amount of assets for an incredibly low price. There doesn't really seem to be a theme going on, but some of these assets are used in the series. So like Nature Renderer, Horse Anim Set Pro, and well, I think one more. But either way, it's really worth looking into. There's just an incredible amount of assets, and even at the highest tier, it's still really, really cheap. So let's get started. So we're starting off in our previous scene and I've already added an environment and the reason I've already done that is because well this is just placing you know placing meshes and it just would have taken way too much time made this video way too long um, in order to finish all of this but I am going to walk through some of the things I did just in order to make sure you'd be able to replicate this. Now when it comes to placement, um, this is just, you know, placing a lot of meshes. I mean, you can see in the list here, uh, well, they're prefabs, but I've placed a lot of rock prefabs. These are all from the, um, what's it called, Polygon uh, Nature Pack. And as you can see here, we have, um, you know, this is the environment, this is also from the nature pack. We have red grass, and I'll show you how to do that. And we have, um, you know, these um, prefabs from the Knights bundle um, and Fantasy bundle, I think, mixed. Um, but yeah, they're, you know, don't choose modular characters, um, and I'll, I'll show why as well. And these are just random ones. Now what I did next is, as you can see, they all have the same controller, which is uh, Frozen Stone. So let's go to that. And what this really is, is it's a new um, animated controller. There we go. You open it up and basically you create one state and you put in an animation you'd like for the Frozen State. And that's it. You know, as this is all, um, you know, they they basically have to stay frozen. So th that's what they're doing. They're staying in that frozen state and that's it. Now, these are not characters from Game Creator. These are literally just the prefabs. So that's why just dragging in a character controller is enough. And that gives them the stony look because you know, they have basically one material on them, which is a basic material with the color gray. Um, I used the, you know, the eyedropper to pick the, the stone color from one of these assets, can't remember which one. And there we go, you know, they, they will look frozen. So that's pretty cool. Um, other than that, you know, I just placed all of these, uh, these assets um, around and I have um, another important thing. So if uh, if you are following the series and like me, you are using Map Magic, all you really have to do is um, where are we? Nature. Um, you create a lock on the terrain. So as you can see, let me turn on the gizmos. Um, you know this red circle. This is the lock, just to make sure that any edits you do to the terrain, um, well, will remain there. Next up, um, with the terrain tool, I made sure this entire inner area had the same height. Uh, makes it a bit easier to make sure all of the magic proje uh, projectiles can actually hit. Because uh, they're not really tracking projectiles, they're just, you know, particle effects. And by making sure this entire area is, you know, pretty much flat, you, uh, you can be sure of that. So yeah, that was uh, that was it. Now, in order to make sure the grass is red, I did the following. Um, again, something we've done so many times already, but I added a map um, vegetation engine element. So basically, game object, boxophobic, and element. 
and then you get this object, you resize it so it matches the area and you pick the color red and yeah that's it you know if I drag this around this would become red so you know that's literally all there is going on I also um, you know removed all vegetation just with um, you know with the terrain tool so in the terrain tool I, uh, I removed all vegetation and just placed it again um, removed the trees and just placed the one because it looked pretty here you know that's that's pretty much it now outside of that um, I have one big change which I think was pretty obvious um, there are going to be two triggers so let me turn on those gizmos so we have the first trigger which is basically this fair and yeah I should have actually placed it a tiny bit better now that, now that I'm seeing it from top um, this should actually have been like this yeah something like this so what this trigger is is um, you know it's a sphere again you match it to the size that's why it's quite important this is a decent circle um, so yeah make sure you uh, you place it right on there um, I don't know why this is uh, this is here this doesn't have to be here let me remove that yeah no wait let me remove this one sorry about that no or did, am I using this I can't really remember ah yeah uh, we'll be using this to activate our boss character I'll uh, we'll do that in a bit so basically you add a trigger on player enter and a set of actions and we'll use this to uh, activate the boss character then we have a post process volume again I've already used that a couple of times in the series but if you don't know how to do that make sure in the package manager um, you know you look up post process where is it there we go and you install it and then the next step is on the main camera you add a post process layer again if you already did this during the series you don't have to do anything here you will already have this make sure you create a layer that it recognizes and then on this trigger volume um, make sure is global for you know you add a post process volume so add component volume post process volume you create a new oh, um, you create a new uh, profile and make sure is global is turned off because otherwise it will just affect the entire map so yeah we uh, we wouldn't want that obviously so this effect will only take place inside of the trigger area and that's literally all there is to it now the effects I am using I'll, uh, I'll show that as well so you can take those over if you want if you you know actually like the look so I have bloom so these are the bloom settings I didn't change all that much it's just pretty much the basic settings and the reason I added bloom is because um, well let me turn it on for a moment it adds this nice um, you know white type of overlay effect on things I don't know it, if I turn it off you know it's just dark and it, it adds a really nice effect in my opinion so I know Bloom can be overused, but given this boss fight area, I think it's a, it's a nice addition. Now the next effect I added is color grading. I didn't actually change anything here. Um, so I just set it to ACES and basically that gives a movie type of post-processing filter. It just all becomes a bit darker and... Um, let me turn off bloom and show what I mean so this is the default look and with the color grading this is the look you get so it looks more well cinematic and I'm pretty sure that's where this uh, actually comes from as well I didn't change anything other than that so I kept it all pretty much the same um, the next effect I added was chromatic aberration and as you can see really plain and simple but it's um, you know it adds this effect so if you look at all of the edges here um, if I turn it off 
you know, you'll see this effect. Loads of games use this. Um, just make sure it's not too intense, because, you know, if you make it too intense, it can become a bit weird, so... And there we go, that's, that's what creates this effect, and I think it looks nice, it looks nice for a boss stage. Um, another important thing about this is, uh, let me turn this off, is that you add a blend distance, so I don't know, um, what was it, 2, I think I added. That way the moment you walk into the trigger, it will slowly blend um, the normal volume, which is, well, I don't think we really said anything to this volume, so there's a nice little transition. Um, depending on how long you make this, big you make this, you know, will get bigger. So we can do three if you want. So yeah, pretty cool. Uh, it's a nice effect. Now, the other thing I did with the stage, um, which is important as well, is a door trigger. So let me turn this on again. And I'm going to turn this off just so we can properly see it. So this door trigger is a simple box collider trigger. Um, in the door opening, so let me actually focus on this. So in the opening of the cave, we have this, um, you know, this cube uh, trigger. And what it does is it has a trigger on it as well. So on player enter, we have a set of actions. And this these actions basically wait one second and they will... I can remove this now. Um, they will activate door. And what is door? Door is literally just a duplicate of this trigger, um, but with the mesh renderer um, active and the same rock material I use on those characters. So basically, once you enter, you can't go out. And that's kind of the idea. You need to finish off the boss fight. And then we'll set up that once the boss character dies, the door will disappear again. So basically closing off the stage once you enter it so yeah pretty uh i think it works pretty well so <clears throat> yeah th this will take some time and you know setting this up just takes a lot of time but there's nothing to you know other than the things i just showed there's nothing to learn here this is just you know placing stuff in the map and i created this stage and you can create it wherever you want um, I could have spent a bit more time on details, I'll admit as well. So I think it looks really nice on the inside. I could have spent a bit more time on the outside, but you know, I'm, uh, it's fine, whatever. So yeah, um, just want to point out as well, these come from the Polygon Knights pack and these come from um, the Polygon Nature pack. So one thing I did forget to do, um, did forget to mention actually, is the following. You will also need to um, re-nav mesh the area once you're done. Just make sure you do that. So basically um, once you're done creating your little area all you really need to do is, um, let me go away, let me close this. You go to window, AI, navigation and then you get your nav mesh. You literally just clear whatever you had and bake it again. Now you can alter these settings. I kept them, you know, at the original settings and it works absolutely fine. And as you can see, you know, all of this get gets nav meshed. Um, these are not walkable areas and, you know, it, uh, it works. It works. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for setting up the stage and um, you know, if you want to do that right now, I'd suggest pausing the video, taking some time, and then, you know, continuing. Cool. So, next up, we're going to add, be adding our boss character. And we're not going to do this completely from scratch, because why would we? So what we're going to do is we're going to drag in one of the prefabs we had before. Honestly, it really, really does not matter which one it is. Um, I don't know why he's in. Okay. And we'll be changing a lot about it, but, you know, already having this base template will allow us to save some time. 
because um, there's a lot of basic things you don't really um, need to change or not change that much. So we have our character. I'm gonna unpack this prefab. Gonna call it boss01. Don't mind all of these strange scripts. Once you hit play once they'll go. That's simply because it was prefabbed. Um, I'll change this to Medusa though, just to give us some, uh, some context. I'm going to turn off can run and can jump. Now Medusa is a powerful character and having her running around like crazy for me it just doesn't make sense. So you know she's powerful, she's just gonna walk. I, I personally do prefer that. I know it's a bit weird but you don't have to do that but I, I don't know. I, uh, I would find it a bit strange if she'd be uh, running around. So next up is our patrol area and let's do that straight away. So basically what we need to do is um, we need to change these markers. So I'm going to keep the first one the same um, and okay which are these? There we go. So yeah I'm going to keep that pretty much um, you know, most likely she'll hardly ever touch this, but just in case it does happen, we do want to make sure the markers are still in a, uh, um, you know, viable place. Uh, again, th there will hardly be any patrolling. Let's be real, she's only going to be activated once you actually enter this stage. So yeah, th there won't really be much of patrolling going on, but just in case it does happen, we don't want her to get stuck um, you know in some weird place so that's the reason why we're doing this so cool now we're going to create an entirely um, let's drag in a prefab first so we actually know we're using Medusa and I'm using the polygon um, fantasy rivals um, pack and obviously just like what everything else I'll link it in the description but this is actually a really really cool um, pack. Um, you know, there is a lot of uh, a lot of really cool characters uh, in here. Um, you know, we have some uh, Anubis, we have giants, um, uh, orcs, um, dwarf, which hardly seems smaller, but okay. Um, golems, and you know, basically this is your uh, you know your boss fight pack. <laughs> pretty much there's just so much uh, so much really cool stuff going on and the thing here what you know what makes it interesting is you know actually really setting up some really cool gameplay mechanics I think everyone's familiar with Medusa um, that's why you know I, I chose to do Medusa and it allows for some really cool mechanics as well now let's drop in that character uh, first so we actually know uh, now we're using Medusa there we go Cool. So uh, yeah, really cool. Um, these, uh, I think these even animate. I'm not sure, but I think they even do. Um, it's a really cool pack, and you know, it's a cool-looking character as well. So we have Medusa, um, and let's get started with actually um, changing um, her behavior tree. And her behavior tree is actually going to be incredibly simple. So that's uh, you know, that's pretty cool. And the reason for that is, you know, last time we set up an incredibly complex behavior tree for the other characters. Well, incredibly complex might be exaggerating a bit, but it was quite complex. However, this is not going to be the case for Medusa simply because you only encounter her here in this stage. And, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to make this bigger. I'm going to make this bigger as well. So yeah, her uh, her perception will be uh, you know will be a bit bigger. Um, you can even make it you know if you don't want her you, you know to lose track of you things like that. You can just completely make this um, you know full circle and just always engage in combat. It's uh, you know it's up to you, whatever you prefer. So I'm going to make it big, and most likely you won't be able to escape the view anyway. But you know, just in case. It could be fun. 
So let's go to our behavior. Um, I already have a Medusa here. I'm going to be deleting that and I'll create a new one. So game creator and behavior and we have our behavior tree. Ah, there we go. So let's rename this. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to make sure we'll easily be able to find all of this. So I'll literally just, you know, name pretty much everything Medusa that is related to her. So um, we have a root, um, we have a composite, and we have a task. Again, the order of this, um, you know, is always going to be important. Let's sort this. So usually we have cannot see, can see, uh, can see, and then search. We're not going to do add searching here. You know, th this is a relatively small arena. She's not going to be searching for you. She's going to find you really <laughs> plain and simple. So um, yeah, you can't really escape the area anyway. So there's just no point in adding search. However, we are adding a extra condition um, to this. And this is good, basically going to be uh, a frozen state. So I'm going to go to preferences. I'm going to set up um, this global bool. So Medusa frozen and it's a bool. So if you don't know how to add this, you know, press plus bool one, just type in a name. What this um, bool will be doing is this is the state, um, you know, the condition um, we'll be using uh, when Medusa herself is frozen. And it's simply the easiest way to make sure all of the other behavior stops functioning. So instead of using cancel actions, all of that, we're just going to put this as the highest priority. So once you bounce back, um, you know, that projectile she sends at you, you'll actually freeze her. And we need to make sure that that always has priority. It will cancel everything else. And yeah, you know, so that's what this is going to be tied to. So variable bool, um, Medusa frozen, yay. So this is the condition. The moment it's turned off automatically, it'll go back to two or three. Now these are going to be simple. There we go. And there we go. Now, unlike, um, unlike in last video where I chose to use a, um, you know, the different actions uh, based on a variable instead of player, again, that's just not necessary in this case. Uh, you know, it's going to be you fighting with Medusa, the end, that's it. So there's just no reason in using variables and making this complicated than it needs to be. So it's already going to, you know, be enough work anyway. So why overcomplicate things for absolutely no reason? Uh, we are going to be adding a uh, execute actions here. Um, there we go. So this will be Medusa frozen. Now let's just call it frozen. You know, it's just going to be for her anyway. Wait to finish. Let's copy this action and paste it here. Let's call this combat. Copy it again and let's call this patrol. And that's it, we're not going to be adding anything else uh, in the behavior tree. And we need to make sure we set up these parameters as well. So uh, frozen, combat and patrol. Make sure you hit enter after, because otherwise it won't um, it won't store it. Um, so I'll, I'll hit save as well, just in case you never know. And let's go back. So now um, Medusa will have these um, new parameters, um, and we we already have a combat, and we already have a patrol, and that's nice. Um, we don't have uh, frozen yet, of course, but we're actually going to be removing the entire combat section we had before. Um, we won't be reusing any of it. We're also going to be removing search. And yeah, let's let's keep patrol. 
I'm actually going to make one change. So in the beginning, the first one wait is going to be three seconds um, before she does anything. So a reason for that is that when you enter the stage, you know, she won't be patrolling. She'll be waiting for you. You don't have to do that, but you know, I don't want her to just wander around uh, before it happens. Cool. So that's, uh, that's nice. Then next up, we are going to be creating, um, oh, sorry about that. We're going to be creating, um, our combat and frozen actions. So actions, um, where's the, there we go. So I'm going to put frozen first because, you know, I'm just going to do this in the order of the behavior graph. It just makes slightly more sense. Cool. Now the combat actions are all going to rely on uh, animation states um, for pretty much everything. So we'll be creating all of that first. Um, yeah, we'll be creating all of that first. So. Um, I have animations here. I'm not going to be recreating the, the states just for the sake of it. And, you know, it's really not that in interesting. Um, I've been using a medieval animations back. Again, you can use whatever animations you want. It's pretty irrelevant. Um, but the important thing is the length of the animations. That's something to keep in mind when you add the weights, and which I'll show in a bit. So wh whatever animation you use, make sure you use the right um, times. So yeah, it's important. I also create a new locomotion state. Now, if you don't know how to create states, um, go to game creator, characters and states. So we have a couple of simple states and we have one locomotion state. In the locomotion state, all I really did um, was replace her idol and her walk forward. And the reason I replaced those is because I actually have some idle animations that are meant for um, female characters. Um, same with walking. It just looks better, um, you know, because it's a woman, so she should, you know, not walk way too bush, especially not someone like Medusa. So, um, yeah, I prefer that. Again, you don't have to. You know, you can have her have the normal walking animations. It's completely fine with me. Um, so yeah, basically, you know, locomotion. You can fill in the rest. Um, I just didn't see the point. She's not going to jump. She's not going to run. Um, so just casual walking idle was fine. If you want to allow her to run, um, just make sure you have her running as well. A lot of the other animations, which are, um, you know, especially the backwards uh, animations, um, you know, the pivot sideways, left, right, they're not by default used. Um, so, for example, if we are using the combat module or if you're using, um, you know, the melee module, those are animations that are being used. However, this character is not going to be using any of that. Um, it's just going, she's just going to be using uh, magic attacks. So a lot of those animations will never show. So that's why I didn't set them up. So for a player, you always have to do it. But for a NPC that doesn't use the melee module or the shooter module, there's just no point because you know, it won't display. So, um, what we have next is we have a, um, a simple state with a spell cost and we have a charge state. So this charge uh, state animation, um, you know, is this one. That's nice. And we have, um, I think I, or a spell. Oh, there we go. I think I used this one. Yeah, there we go. So that's the one being used. You can use whatever animations you want. Just keep this in time. So in, in mind, how long is it? So, you know, write it down somewhere or something because um, we'll need to play with uh, timings a bit. Also, make sure you bake the pose, etc. Uh, if needed. Um, so if it comes from a, uh, 
a character like this, you'd need to select the animation here and then, uh, um, you know, bake the pose, etc. Same for the idle and run animations, walk animations. So, yeah, um, a, a bit of animation work here. Um, you can make it a lot more complex, use a lot more animations. If you are going to be using this for something that will turn out to be a game, I would suggest putting a bit more effort into it. Um, but yeah, so there we go. Um, we're using states. And the reason I'm using states, by the way, instead of uh, animations, one, because it will be a lot easier to find, because, you know, there's, you can have, you know, 2,000 animations from animation packs but you're not going to have 2,000 states, I mean, most likely. Um, and states also allow for entry and exit clips, which is pretty cool. Um, there's several uh, animation, magic attack animations uh, she has as well that actually have those, um, you know, entry exit states. Um, so yeah, pretty useful. So now that, um, now that all of that is out of the way, um, what we're going to do next um, is also make sure she has um, a trigger on her. Let me remove this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she already has loads of triggers because, you know, this is based on the default character. I'm going to be removing this trigger. We don't need it. Um, I'm going to be removing this trigger because we don't need it. Um, we'll keep this on because uh, you know she'll be vulnerable to spells um, she'll be vulnerable to receive shots and attacks we still have those life and death uh, conditions we'll be changing them uh, a bit though but yeah it's good to have them and we'll be adding a new trigger um, which is going to be um, tag enter and this tag is going to be a new tag um, I call it uh, Medusa Freeze. Uh, I think I've you know explained how to add tags a lot of times, but basically you know tag add tag and just add a tag. Uh, these will be incredibly simple actions. So basically, it's just going to be a. Uh, um, no, not toggle bull. And it's going to be Medusa Frozen. So that's the bull we set up in the behavior tree. So basically this will tell us that part of the behavior tree um, will now play. That will um, be activated. So this part will now activate because the bull is now set to uh, set to true. So we've got that covered. Um, and other than that, we're going to be uh, keeping a lot of the stuff here exactly the same, so not a lot of changes, which is uh, you know which is good because it will make it a lot easier. Now, on frozen, so these are the uh, the actions we're executing um, from the behavior tree. So let's make sure we actually add them all as well. So frozen, and we have our combat here. So what we're triggering here is a uh, state. Uh, I'm going to do a reset states. You don't have to do this, but um, I, I prefer doing that. So I'm going to do so. uh, reset. And yes, that's, that's fine. Next up, um, I'm going to be using a change material. Um, I'm going to be using the same rock material I showed you before, um, which is literally just a, uh, a simple color uh, material. Then on Medusa, we're going to expand the character component and we're going to be selecting the actual model. So this model has uh, a material, so we need to find that one as well. That's you know quite important. So let's find it. So here we go, Fancy Rivals 01. Then we're going back to our frozen actions. We're going to already duplicate this and drag in that original material. So, because you know, she'll need to revert back as well. Now, you can put a bit more effort into this and make sure everything changes because there's some attachments on the character, as you can see, which are the snakes. Um, so, you know, let's just do that as well. Why not? Um, let's make sure it reverts back as well. And 
What are these snakes? There we go. Snakes. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll drag in the snakes model as well. There we go. I'm, I'm pretty sure these use is the same. Yeah, that's the same. Cool. So now those snakes on our head will um, change the material as well. What we'll do next is we'll add a weight of five seconds. Um, you can make this weight longer, shorter. Basically, the important thing to note here is that during this weight, um, this is the amount of time the player has to attack her. Because the only way we can attack Medusa is if she's frozen into stone. I thought it was a cool mechanic, otherwise it would be, you know, a bit easy. So you have to, uh, you know, turn her into stone as well in order to attack her. So the time you set here, the time it takes her to revert back, is the time you'll have to attack. So I think five seconds is more than enough. Keep in mind you most likely won't be standing in front of her, so you still have to go to her. But the stage really isn't all that big, so five seconds is enough and you know, it'll make it interesting, but you can make this longer if you find it too challenging. Um, that's okay. Cool. Um, and then at the end, um, I'm going to add a small 0.1 weight. Um, and that's because I want to make sure all of this really does happen first. And then we're going to uh, change that global bool of Medusa Frozen and we're going to turn it off again. So automatically now this part of the uh, the behavior tree no longer meets the requirements and it will go back to um, these actions which will be the combat actions so pretty cool so that's it for the frozen um, so this is if you you know you freeze her we're lucky here um, obviously you know she only uses one material so a simple change material is going to be doing the trick as you'll see in a bit, for the player, it's not that easy. Um, the way I did it isn't perfect. There's downsides to it. Um, you can make it perfect, but it will take a lot more time to set up. So, you know, it's up to you. So for combat, um, we'll, be, uh, we'll be adding a couple of things. And in order to create these, we'll need to instantiate a couple of things, um, which we haven't created yet. But I, I do want to go through this, and then we'll, uh, we'll create those things as well. And... Um, yeah, when it comes to um, you know when it comes to this, um, the combat actions really aren't that hard. So I'm going to add a wait of uh, three seconds, which is a bit long. But again, keep in mind you you can't actually kill her during this time. Um, we're going to do a stop follow. Someone follow. There we go. Let's drag in Medusa. Follow a uh, player. You know, we'll, we'll keep a little distance, um, doesn't really matter all that much how much is it, because we'll change something else in a bit, but I'll, uh, I'll just keep these at the default. Then uh, we're going to... Activate, um, set active. We're going to be activating a effects and this is from the this is from the particle effects if you don't have the polygon particle particle effects keep in mind they're still on sale this weekend um, at the date of recording so pretty good to know so i'll just lock this particle effects prefabs and um, yeah i'm using the healing you can use whatever you want uh, i'm using this one healing circle i think it is uh, one and I'm going to drag that on Medusa herself. And yeah, Gizmos is on. Oh, let me turn that off. And basically this is what it uh what it looks like. So it's nothing all too special. It's uh it's fun. I'm going to move this up one bit. So it's it will be be, be a bit more clear. I'm going to unpack this prefab as well. And what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll change this color to I don't know this red. It's the red from the from the grass, and 
and you can't do multiple at once and you let, yeah let's just make sure everything else is red as well that's why it's important you unpack the prefab obviously because otherwise you'll be changing the default and yeah well you know we'll have this effect it's cool it's nice it's uh it's simple so i got lost here a bit in all of these things there we go so i'm going to turn it off now and in our combat actions this is what we're going to be activating so uh, this will be matched with a state so again character Medusa and I'll be using that ch um, what is it charge state and again you know you can use whatever animation you want but basically this is um, this is going to be used as well you know, something to keep in mind is the moment she becomes unfrozen, um, this is what we'll be uh, we'll be seeing as well. So you can see it as a uh, you know, I, it's in my case it's a charging animation, but you can see it as an animation uh, you know animation that uh, you know removes the uh, frozen from her as well. So I think it's uh, I think it's cool. Again, the length of the animation doesn't really matter in terms of gameplay mechanics because the moment she's no longer frozen you can't damage her anyway. So yeah, thought it was pretty cool. It's a nice little effect. I think I'm going to move that weight until the end actually. Um, so you know what, let's make this weight 0 0.1. I'll do that straight away. Because uh, then it, when she becomes unfrozen, it matches uh, more with this animation. I think it's actually slightly better than the way I did it before. Now the animation was 1.6 seconds, so I'm just going to do a 1.6 weight. Um, you know what, let's just copy that over. And we'll turn off that healing circle. A small weight, just to make sure we separate all of these actions. Uh, going to rotate Medusa towards us. Um, and the reason for that is, you know, you want to make sure she actually fires towards the player. Yeah, because otherwise it's it's going to be a bit weird. <laughs> um, so yeah, rotate towards her and then we're going to uh, set her in a state again. You know, I can just copy this over. And this is where we will use the attack um, animation. So basically a whatever spell animation you have that, you know, that works. Um, which one is it? There we go. So I'm using this one. It's it's, it's not um, you know perfect, but it's it's nice. It's a nice animation. So this is what I'll be using for both. Um, you can have different ones for different spells. Uh, you know, get creative. Do whatever makes you happy. So that's the one. Uh, that's the one I'll be using. So we'll uh, we'll be changing her uh, state. And then we'll uh, wait a 0 0.3 seconds. And the reason for that is that um, in the beginning of the animation, she's not shooting forward. I think it's 0 0.5 actually. She's not shooting forward. She's doing some weird gestures with her hands. And only after 0 0.5 seconds is she actually going to, you know, put her arm forward and blast the object. And we're going to add an instantiate here. And the important thing to keep in mind is we haven't created these yet, so we'll do that in a bit. So instantiate. Um, I'm already going to add the transform of Medusa just to make sure we're not for, you know, forgetting that. And this will be a tiny bit higher. Now the important thing here is that um, you know it ha has to be about one because that's pretty much where her arms are, uh, are, you know, in the height of the character, so it will match a bit better. Um, we still need to create the object. And this, um, the one I'll be using takes two seconds, so um, that's why I'm using two seconds. Going to be uh, rotate again, because after those two seconds, she's going to do yet another attack. Um, which one is it? This one? Yeah, she'll be doing yet another attack um, and another instantiate, which will be a, uh, you know, it's going to be the fireball. 
that's the one that's actually causing damage. The first attack is just going to be freezing our player, but because we can't move, the fireball is always going to hit us. So that's why it's important to dodge or reflect the um, the freeze attack. So we're going to uh, wait three seconds. We're going to do. Um, let's copy this one over. Uh, follow the player. You know what? This first follow should actually be stop follow. Sorry about that. So the first one should be stop follow. We're going to follow the player and um, we're going to add another wait of three seconds and then restart. There we go. So keep in mind this these three seconds match um, you know match partially the animation so it seems long but in reality it's not actually really that long. Um, and this three seconds will be to make sure she has the ability to come closer to the player as well because otherwise you know it's it's all going to be a bit far. So when it comes to the follow I'm actually going to keep this a bit more. Um, she, she shouldn't be too um, you know all too close. I don't know. Something like this. So cool, you know, she's using magic, it's not melee, so there's no point in her, you know, standing right in front of us. So that's it for the uh, combat actions. I know we uh, we need to create these, uh, these objects now, so that's what we're going to do. And the first one we'll be creating is a simple magic effect. And I'm going to use that from the fantasy rivals, actually. So FX, and we'll be using the magic missile. This is the one. So I'm going to make sure I duplicate it because I don't want to affect the original. And I'm going to rename this and make sure Medusa is in a name. And again, I, I want to make sure I can easily find everything that is related to her. So there we have it. Um, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be making a couple of changes here because the default um, particle actually acts a bit weird. So first thing we'll do is we'll turn off our looping. And next thing we are going to do is actually in velocity and lifetime, we're going to be changing this. And I know that's a bit weird and it's not something we, you know, we actually ever did before. Um, but yeah, it's for some reason, um, it moves on a different uh, axis than all of the other projectiles so now we have it moving on the same axis and yes yeah, it's, it's a bit strange that all of the other projectiles actually move forward if you instantiate them and this one doesn't so yeah I'm not sure why um, next thing we'll do is we'll uh, we'll create a 3d object a sphere and the size of this is going to be important this is how big your hitbox is I'm going to do 0.3 which is definitely, oh, let's turn off that mesh renderer, which is definitely not the size of the actual projectile, as you'll see. Um, no, let's make sure it's a bit lower. Yeah, seems to be in the wrong place. Well, the projectile is pretty randomized, but it seems to be a bit too high, at least. Oh, sorry about that, just a sphere. Or not, I don't know. I'm just going to keep it as is. Anyway, in reality, it'll uh, it'll be fine. So this is going to be our uh, our trigger area. Now, before we actually start setting that up, let's add something here real quick, um, which is also going to be a trigger. And this is going to be a enable on enable. And um, I'm just going to add the actions here because we'll be destroying the object after a certain amount of time. So wait, I'm going to do 10 seconds, which is a bit long, um, but I'll, uh, I'll show why as well. But after 10 seconds, the projectile will disappear from the hierarchy. It will be destroyed, so the entire effect. Otherwise, if we don't do that, we'll instantiate loads of effects and they'll all remain in the hierarchy. So we need to make sure it destroys itself. 
now that um, that's out of the way let's make sure we actually um, start doing something on the trigger so trigger needs to be a trigger by the way and um, on enable it is going to be moving so transform move from itself let's make sure rotate is off quite important if rotate is not off linear by the way if rotate is not off it'll uh you know it'll move a weird way i'm not sure why that's even on by default and um yes i know this is strange it needs to be on the x-axis and again it's you know it's those a bit of a weird thing but even though we change the velocity on the z-axis as you can uh And yeah, I think I needed minus ninety. Anyway, yeah, it's a it's a bit strange, but it'll uh, it'll move the right way right now. So you'll uh, you'll see once we actually start using it. So yeah, that's uh it's a bit weird, but I'll uh, I'll show you in a bit. Now the next trigger we need to add is a trigger that is actually related to the damage, and I'm going to be keeping all of that on the actual magic effects. I don't want to spam the player with loads of triggers that just happen for one boss fight. It's just a bit much. So that's why we're doing um, tag enter, there we go. Um, that's why we're doing it all on the player. Not collision, on tag enter, there we go. And we're going to be entering the tag of the player. Where is player? There we go. And the player ha should have this default tag. I think it has it by default, but if you don't, you know, make sure the player has the uh, the tag. So yeah, by doing all of this on the actual player, it uh, it just makes a lot more sense. So we'll be uh, we'll be adding some conditions. And before we actually continue to do so, I'm going to do something weird, and we'll set it up later. I'm going to be duplicating this one and um, I'm going to name this Medusa Freeze. And I'll show you why as well. So, what we're doing here, um, we have the condition. I'm going to be adding a, uh, a condition to it, of course, and the state will be um, related to blocking. So, if the player is blocking, then we'll have a set of actions and we'll have a set of uh, else actions as well. Now this is where it becomes a bit um, complicated. I couldn't find a way real quick to literally bounce back the effect. So instead of actually bouncing, we're going to be um, instantiating another object, which is literally the same object. I mean, it looks the same. Um, but from the player perspective. So it's kind of like bouncing it back without actually bouncing it back. In order to make sure it doesn't look weird, we also need to uh, add a small weight, 0 0.05, and we'll destroy the entire object. So yeah, it's, uh, this is a bit interesting, but basically what we're doing is we are instantiating this effect and then we're destroying the actual missile. So it seems kind of like we're bouncing it back without actually bouncing it back. Um, I'm sure you could actually bounce it back. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not that familiar with physics for, uh, for particle effects. So if you find a way to do that, that's awesome. Um, but this pretty much looks the same. Now the else actions will be uh, controllable player, where is it? Property. So the player will not be controllable during this time, which is basically freezing. And then here comes the tricky part. So we need to add a stone effect to the player as well. The problem is, is that we have character creation, which allows you to change skin colors. So we'll be using those same actions um, where is it? Hair. And, um, not hair. Um, I think it was body. Skin. There we go. So, 
there's no problem in actually changing the the skin of the player you know that's that's going to be completely fine the problem is is getting it back to the same color so wait of five seconds which is why we had it destroy only after 10 seconds by the way because you will need to perform all of these actions and yeah changing it back to the original color is what is going to be tricky here so will be controllable again after ten, uh, five seconds and I'm going to find it um, this way so what I'm going to do is for a moment here let me block this going to go to our user interface menu system change panel and there we have hair color and skin color so th yeah this is kind of the the problem with this approach is I'll be using um, you know these colors because I need to change it back you know somehow and yeah I can't really I haven't really found an, a way like just going to be honest here I haven't really found a way to make sure we actually select the uh, the right one so this is for the skin and this is for the hair but yeah I haven't really found a, uh, a right way to do this so for now I'm going to keep it like this um, if I find a way that actually um, you know that actually works well with the character customization I'll, uh, I'll do that later but unfortunately I just haven't found a way to do that so I am um, what is it hero zero zero is what we're using as the material so this is the hair color and this is the skin color now I'm sure we can actually we could actually do this by um, storing the value we choose in a variable and then pick it from there um, I'll, I'll mess around with that and if I find it I'll, uh, I'll post a quick solution um, so actually those should be at the end and then we'll, uh, let's duplicate these and change them put them back here and we'll, uh, we'll use the stone color and can't really remember what that looked like I don't know it was some type of grayish something like this it's fine so you know you can pick the same color if you uh, if you want uh, you know by finding it but I'll, I'll keep it like this so yeah here we have our uh, our first actual little issue with um, with this and I'm sure we can uh, you know we can actually find it by uh, we can do it with storing variables um, you know mess around with it I'll, uh, I'll do the same and if I find a solution I'll, uh, I'll post it so yeah here we go so this is the uh, oh, that's annoying Here is the effect. So if we get, you know, if it collides with the player uh, tag, it will turn our skin into stone. And after five seconds, we can control the player again, and we'll, you know, go back to our original look. So a bit more actions than for the actual enemy character, but that's because you know it's just one mesh using one material so a lot easier so yeah that's it for the uh, um, the projectile Medu Medusa shoots at us and this is going to be the projectile that does the opposite so this is the projectile that uh, you know collides with our uh, with Medusa herself, so we're still going to be using the same actions after 10 seconds it disappears where uh, that's all the right keep everything else the same it's just a sphere um, is slightly different so this will have a tag Medusa freeze um, which is going to uh, cause her to freeze we'll still have the same conditions um, so it will still move uh, move around exactly the same um, but we won't have a trigger because the that trigger is on Medusa herself so we can uh, remove these conditions as well this is going to be a simple one 
so yeah this is what we shoot back and most of it is exactly um, exactly the same and I just realized I had um, move player um, that's actually quite important to change so let's go back to this one as well and make sure this, this doesn't move the player because then we'll have something really weird happen and it moves the actual sphere itself now the reason we're doing this by the way if, if that wasn't clear and this needs to be two seconds as well well I'm not really uh, all that sharp so the reason this is uh, um, you know it needs to move along with the speed of the object the object has a velocity of 25 for two seconds the calculation is a bit different but basically this is still two seconds and it's two times 25 becomes the 50 I know it's a bit strange but that's how you make sure it moves along at the same speed you can change that velocity if you want it to go slower then you need to change this as well to match that um, so yeah let's make sure we do that for this one as well um, two seconds because otherwise it won't match cool so a lot of changes here um, what I'm going to do for her second attacks is going to be the fireball now I already created a fireball before um, so I hope you've seen that video um, the magic video and I think it's in this one um, I don't know, fire uh, just some prefabs there we go so this was the one um, shooting straight um, you know it affects the um, the terrain as well it changes the terrain color I think it's pretty cool it's a nice effect so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this one and you know do the same here fire straight to Medusa edition so yeah let's open that up and um, you know here it's uh, it's going to be again really really similar um, We'll, uh, we'll change a couple of things so the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure the tag is gone off spell because um, otherwise it will damage her so untagged and um, we're going to basically be setting up the actions exactly the same as with the other spell so everything will be on the actual object itself so let's make sure again spell is untagged because otherwise it will damage Medusa herself um, we'll be adding a trigger here uh, tag enter again we're going to be using player where is player there we go it's no blocking here you can't block the fireball that's the whole point um, you're just gonna take damage and you know that's that's also you know the uh, the only action there is to it now of course I've heard men people mention that for some reason they don't have subtract in this list I, I have no explanation for that um, so if you don't have subtract you can also use add and just do minus 20 um, if you have subtract make sure it's uh, just 20 but yeah if for some reason you don't have that and I've heard several people mention that they don't have this this option um, just do add minus 20 so uh, yeah and that's it you know that's all there is to it so this is pretty much the same as the magic spell we set up before um, but then yeah for the uh, for Medusa so in combat instantiate um, and this is again the reason why I just want to use the Medusa attack for everything well, uh, we'll use this one first and we'll use the fireball next oh there we go and this will instantiate so yeah that's uh, that's most of it I know this uh, this already is quite a lot um, really to be completely fair um, but yeah that's uh, pretty much there is to it one little change though is um, I'm moving this a bit forward uh, so offset of one because the fireball it just behaves a bit different so I'm moving this a bit for forward when instantiating it as well um, just looks a bit better 
Um, and the next change we're going to do is to her um, life and death conditions. So um, let's collapse all of these. Th these are all going to be exactly the same. Um, I can remove this. Uh, this is all going to be exactly the same. You can have a, a different loot drop, of course. Um, but this is what we're going to be changing. So let's uh, let's copy this, then remove it. And we're going to be doing a call conditions, which means we need to create some conditions. We'll drag those in before we forget. Add clause, and there won't be an else, just an if. If the bool um, Medusa frozen is true, then we can cause her damage. Now, I am going to set a default value here. Um, you don't have to do that. But I think damaging Medusa should be a slow process. It's a boss, ba uh, boss battle. So rather than creating again a new stat for her, you can actually just um, adjust the damage. If you don't want to do that, if you want to uh, give her the default um, you know, damage your sword has, which you can upgrade, etc, 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 then all you need to do is um, create a new health uh, attribute for Medusa, um, which I don't want to do. So that's why I'm doing it like this. So basically it's really simple. If she's frozen, we can damage her. And the else is nothing. So if she's not frozen, we can't damage her. So hitting her just won't do anything. And the nice thing is, is that because all of these, um, here we are, all of these triggers um, use the same life and death conditions. Nothing can damage her unless she's frozen. Everything can damage her if she's frozen. That's kind of the kind of the point. Cool. Now, since um, you know blocking is the only way to actually reflect back the um, you know the, the the ball she's shooting at you, um, which causes her to freeze, which is the only time you can actually damage her. You know, using your melee weapon might be the best choice, but I don't want to remove the other triggers. You know, you should still be able to damage her um, different ways, but you always deal the same damage. So, yeah, it's better to use the sword. Cool. So, I think that's mostly it. I'm not entirely sure, but I think so. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag her in here in Medusa stage. I do remember that this trigger. Um, turn her active so quite important and we need to turn this trigger back on so there we go now we're going to try this out um, if I miss something I'll, uh, I'll pause it just to see what I did wrong so let's give this a go I see I have user interfaces turned off, which I always seem to do for some reason. Um, so let's run and let's pick up that sword. I'm just going to be picking up the sword here, nothing else. There we go. Now if everything it goes as to planned, this will look great. If not, then not. So I'm already going to make sure I select Medusa in our... Um, there we go. Let's make sure we actually select her. Um, we, can, uh, we can see what's going on. So we're approaching the area right now. The door is uh, open. You know, we we see some grass, and as you can see, this is our transition, and that looks really nice. I really do like the transition effect. Um, she already sees it as well. As you can see, um, it's blocked, so that's cool. Oh, and yeah, she's uh, she's ready for action. So let's uh, let's draw this out. That was, uh, she missed. So I'm going to do nothing here and I'm going to let her hit me. 
and as you can see we can't move we're frozen and the fireball hits us great so cool we have to move just a bit I'm going to uh, lock on to Medusa as well um, Oh, I just dodged that. And yeah, this is going to be the tricky part, making sure that... So definitely something is going wrong here with the... Uh... Oh, I don't know why I'm blocking that. I turned off got, uh, you know, my desk screen, by the way, for testing. So yeah, there's definitely, definitely something wrong with the projectile shooting. It's not going at us straight whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I'll, uh, I'll need to tweak that. It's interesting, I'm curious what it could be. Um, so it's going to be a bit hard to... Uh... Oh, okay, so we hit her. That's great. We can now damage her. Oh, just a bit. And as you can see, we can no longer damage her. Okay, that's a bit weird. But yeah, so this is all working. The damage is working. So actually pretty much everything is working. It's just the projectile is not going entirely straight. It's going in a, a bit of a... I mean, it's just a bit weird. Let's just say it like that. Now, you can make this obviously a bit more interesting and, you know, have the projectiles um, randomize or things like that just to add some variation. So obviously now it's incredibly predictable um, how she'll shoot. Even if she shoots really... The fireball goes really nicely, but um, and as you can see, if you're you know you can control the player, it will be easy to dodge. But yeah, it's uh, that's definitely a bit weird. Um, but this is nice. I do like that. Um, I like the mechanic. Um, you know the little uh, frozen guys here. I think it's cool. But yeah, for some reason, it's definitely not perfect when it comes to her shooting the projectile goes really off cool so all perfect I don't really need to pause anything here because um, yeah there's just really one thing we need to adjust so let's look up Medusa and let's look at this um, not the fireball what am I doing Let's look at um, the projectile freeze and it's all zero. It's all fine actually. I don't really see the problem. I mean, it, it moves a bit, don't get me wrong, but it moves a tiny bit. It doesn't move that much. Seems to randomize a bit at the start, but just at the start, and doesn't really have much of an effect. So, I might have done something wrong when it comes to instantiating the actual object. So let's head back to Medusa. Combat actions, instantiate missile. Yeah, and that's just zero. There's nothing really wrong there. So I am a bit curious. What I'm going to do, I should have done that from the start. I'm going to um, hit play again. And what I'm going to do is the moment she fires the projectile, I'm going to pause the scene. I'm going to have a look at the actual positioning. Because I don't recall it being, the positioning being this strange the first time I did this. Um, it seemed to be pretty much on point. And the positioning of the um, the fireball is just you know perfect. So uh, again, forgot to turn on user interfaces. So yeah, it's definitely interesting. Um, you know, there, there didn't seem to be anything wrong um, the first time, and you know the projectile is acting a bit strange. So uh, I need to try this out.
So I'm, uh, I'm glad everything else looks pretty much perfect, um, which is really cool. But yeah, this is weird. And again, this is perfect. So I see I, uh, I made a mistake with the walking animations as well. Okay, that's that's straight. That's straight. Fireball still looks really cool. Affecting the ground and everything. Okay. Yeah, we're uh, we're screwed. Okay. So let's take a bit more distance from her. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll try it one more time, but it actually seems like there is nothing wrong. Yeah, no, there's nothing wrong. Not really sure what happened the first time. It, it seemed off, but so now it's all going straight. It's going straight back. Um, it's actually pretty perfect. Okay, well, that was a, a strange bounce, but that's okay. I don't find it that hard if it, you know, it misses back at times. But yeah, it's, um, it is interesting. Yeah, it's all good, actually. Cool. Well, I, uh, I thought I, uh, I made a mistake, but it, seems like it didn't I'm not really sure why the first time it seemed to play a bit differently but it's uh, it's all good now and yeah th so that's the thing you know obviously I turned off the death effect because um, I'm pretty sure we would have died already a long time ago but yeah this kind of the idea of the mechanic um, you know she can freeze us and ironically the only way to kill her is to freeze her and I think that's really cool um, you know her fireball is slow and it's easy to dodge but if you're frozen you can't dodge anything and the velocity on her um, you know on her freeze attack is really high it's a really um, you know fast projectile um, making it you know not that easy to uh, to dodge and yeah pretty pretty cool So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I think it's been really fun creating this and I really uh, personally enjoy doing something else when it comes to the you know, mechanics, something less basic. Um, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.